Merple music tutorial. I am going to do that because it is 10 p.m. and I'm tired and I don't know what to do. So I'm gonna do this because that's what I do. And yeah, first we start up with start off with like an instrument. Usually I open up my serum. Yep, serum. All right, so I got serum open here, and I'm going to see, try and find some sounds. I have lots and lots of fucking presets, which I can check around and try and find something I like. Usually I go in with a song with what style and whatever shit I want to do with it already thought out beforehand. Because usually when I don't, it's hard to kind of figure it out how to start. When making a song, I feel like you should really think about what you want to make. Because if you don't and go in blind, it'll, I feel like it'll take longer to find what you you're really looking for. But usually I start off with a bass. Ooh, I really like that one. Blue scale. Alright, alright. Back on track. Bass. I've gotten the bass. Now, now what we do is the best part actually making the music and not finding the sounds usually I put that on a mixer track and then I go straight to this the piano roll make sure I'm on here uh, yep and then I start making a bass line Okay, tutorial, tutorial mind. I gotta get in my tutorial mindset. My first tutorial. Come on, tutorial. Get in my, get in my body. Tutorial. Get in my body, tutorial. All right, I think it's inside of me. All right. <laughs> All right. Basically. I get a root note, basically, D for the first bar, as I've said before, I think. I don't know if I'll keep it in the video, but these are bars, number, 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 bars. And basically, for each bar, I usually choose a root note, D sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, it can be any one as long as it sounds good to you for this one i chose d sharp d sharp f sharp g sharp oh yeah i probably should also choose the bpm i always forget about that even when i'm making a song casually i always forget the bpm so let's just uh let's see let's go with 158 Alright, so basically I chose the D sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp as the notes for each of the four bars I'm going with. And basically what that means is the melody for the bass, kind of. Like, not really a melody. Well, maybe a melody. I don't really know how to classify that. But basically it will revolve around the root note for that bar that you choose. So basically, D sharp revolves around D sharp. That's why there's multiple D sharps there. Kind of like dances around it. Kind of see it? How it dances around like the D and then another D up here, but it's an octave up. I like to do that with bass lines. It's very nice. And then these notes here, just building up to the another D. Because we love D around here. 
Why did I say that? <laughs> but anyways, and then this one builds up to this. You would probably expect another D, but then it's like F sharp. Oh my God. I didn't expect that. Who would have seen that coming? And that's really nice in music when you don't really expect something. But it's also nice when you do expect something because it gives your brain dopamine. And it can't get too repetitive or, like, you know, predictable. But it's, you got to strike a balance between predictability and unexpectedness. Like, boo! Did I spook you? I was unexpected. Wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that the highlight of your day? <laughs> All right. Now that I've gotten a bass line, I'm going to do some chords. Once you've got your bass line down, I feel like you'll be able to think of what you want next for this. And for this, you don't always need chords. It's just nice to have them. But basically, what I feel like is good for this one, what feels right, is some of the classic super saws. And I'm gonna go like, I'm gonna super saw all over the place. I'm gonna put this here. This is the root note, that bass note. And then I'm gonna go like, ignore these. You can also, I forgot to mention this, but if you want, you can go to view here. Then you can go all the way down to helpers, scale highlighting, and then you can choose your root note whatever key you want to be in like I just kept it at D sharp for some reason but usually I either usually with like keys I ignore like everything in here except for major Ionia Ionia Ionian minor natural Aeolian and then the other blues scale that's mainly what I focus on other blues, I could go into another video explain how to use that because it's used a tiny bit differently than the other scales, but uh, that's a thing for another time. But so basically, with the chords, I didn't even explain it, I just went straight to it. All right, now I'm gonna explain it. Basically, this is some basic knowledge. You probably already know this if you've been looking at tutorials. But I'm going to explain it anyway for anyone who somehow saw this as their first tutorial. But basically, with chords, you got to choose a root note. When you got the root note, just pretend that these darker notes here don't exist. They are not real. And just basically, you skip this one, and then you put the note here. You skip this one, and then you put the note there. And boom, you got a chord. Boom. Ain't that amazing? What I like to do is do it again. Skip that. Fuck that note. And then put the note here. Boom, a seventh chord. Ain't that cool? This is the minor 7. You want to know how that's determined? It's by the middle note. It's by this one. Since this one is this way, it's a minor. But when you move it just one up, it's a major. Well, technically, this is just a 7 chord because this one wasn't moved up as well. A major 7 chord. Oh my god. I am amazing at music this is what i do i'm so smart all right moving that back down. back to the minor seven and basically you hear that mm, that's the sound of i don't know chords basically i'm gonna do that again for this one because it's the same note i'm basically gonna do that for each one
another thing I like to do with chords is, you see, I like to move this top note down an octave. I like to move it down an octave so it kind of transitions better between these chords, uh, between these chords and this chord. So then it'll smoothly go to the next chord. And this one's way farther now, so I'm going to move this down an octave. But I'm also going to move this one also down an octave. And boom. I feel like this would sound better up an octave. Yeah, that sounds way better. All right, let me clone this chord a bit more to give it more of a rhythm. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go all the way over here to current project history and then undo that, undo that. So I'm back to selecting this one back again and then I can And then I can do that again, clone it again, make it smaller. Boom, cloned again. And if you don't like what you're doing, you can just delete it. Because I don't like this. This is ass. Alright, back to square one. I taught you some stuff about chords. It doesn't work in this context of what I'm doing here. But maybe if I try and implement the chords in a different way, maybe if I do it without any rhythm stuff and just go like bam bam putting the chords here boom boom sometimes I like to do something where I alter like the last note of the chord to be a different one I like when no when chords sound a bit off and then go to a nicer sounding chord. It adds resolution. I don't know why I'm so smart. My brain is so big. It is growing as we speak. Might be like a tumor or something. Who knows? But yeah. All right, those last two chords are the same. The second chord I changed a bit. Yeah, that sounds better. I feel like the rhythm thing wasn't really nice. All right, now let's think. What could I add to this? Let me use my huge brain that takes 20 years to think of one thing you know what i like water did he know that that is not what i'm supposed to be thinking of right now but what i'm thinking about right now is water i should be thinking about the next instrument i'm about to add oh yeah i just remembered something when making bass like this the kind of bass that i'm doing works better when you add sub bass to it let's see I usually use flex for this so it doesn't lag my project as much because using why did I type flex what am I thinking sub bass all right now that I got the sub bass let me just put that in its own mixer track like the rest basically 
it's going to be so hard to add this. So basically what you're going to do is click copy. Then you go to sub base. Then you click paste. And boom. You did it. Wasn't that the hardest thing you've done in your life? I might move it down an octave. Boom. I did it. I'm making music right now. This is this is something I do all the time. All right. So next we got to go back to thinking of adding another instrument. Let's see. What can we add? Maybe this will work. Lead Sonic. Let's see. Can I incorporate this somehow? Alright, I think I'm done with the melody. I might tweak it later. You can always tweak your melodies later. But, basically, the way I mostly make melodies, the ones that I really like that I make, tend to follow this basic rule pattern. Basically, I start off with something like pretty basic, like this. Da dun da dun dun, and then basically, I copy that over to the next one, and basically I change something about it, like how it, instead of it goes dun da dun dun, it goes. Bum, ba, da, da, da. Yeah, see that? You see how it's different? And then it goes straight back to the dun 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 dun, which kind of gives it to an element of predictability, but a nice predictability. And then I do a different thing again. Usually I'll change it up a bit more than copying the same thing. But here I decided to just copy the same start. But that's kind of like a breakdown of how I structure melodies. How I actually make the melodies? I tend to follow the chords. You see how I can see the chords? I tend to mostly focus on the chord notes. I am only ever using non chord notes, usually as transition notes. And that's basically how I like do my melodies. And now that I've got this all here, I'm gonna probably name these tracks. Oh yeah, but I gotta put that in a mixture track. Okay, this is the bass. Boom. Typed in the super saws. Boom. Typed in sub bass. That's already typed in for me. Then boom. Oh, lead. Boom. That's how you spell it. Then boom. Split by channel. And then I got all these tracks that I can move out. I usually have the sub bass in the same thing as the bass. So I'm just going to cut that out. Whoops. Alright, go into the bass and put in the sub bass in there. <laughs> Then removing this track, and boom. Now time to put that back there. Now I have them all in separate tracks. Okay, time to, let's see, let me just structure this in, in a way that I stereotypically do usually have one thing not there and then add it after all right next 
I usually add drums. Don't you love drums? They make a song. Well, not all songs. Lots of songs I do. They would not really work without drums. Uh, let me go to my huge folder of a bunch of drum packs. I usually go with cymatics because I don't feel like searching through all these drums to find a new one that I haven't used before because <laughs> I'm lazy like that. You know, I use the dubstep starter pack and go to the kicks. I'll go with this one. This is a classic. And then I'll come up with a little starter drum pattern for the intro. Usually it's something like basic like this. Usually it doesn't sound like that because I haven't gotten the mixing part that because I gotta I probably should mix this first. I gotta fix the mixing. The sub bass is clashing with the kick, which is adding that weird distorted sound. I think. That's what I believe is cut off this part of the kick. Because usually I like doing that, as you can hear, without the kick. The kick is kind of like distorted, but not in a good distortion way, kind of like in a bad distortion way. So basically I'm going to move it. Got to turn down the sub bass. So basically, how I'm going to fix this mistake, well, not really a mistake, but mixing issue, is I'm going to just go over here, find Fruity Peak Controller, and move this bass up to like a tiny bit less than halfway. Then go to the sub bass, which I have on insert 5. Add a fruity parametric EQ2, move this all the way till it says a hundred and around 115 Hz or Hertz, I believe. Move this dot here down to its like looks like that. Then right click this, link to controller. Make sure remove conflicts is off if you're going to do this for multiple things. Because it will rem remove like the automation. But change this to inverted. Make this peak control peak. It'll show which insert it comes from if you have multiple peak controllers. And then press accept. Then you can see it will remove the sub. I'll probably also do this for this one because, you know. I'll probably just remove the sub from this completely because that's already taken up by the other bass thing, sub, the other sub, because this is just the normal bass sound. There, now it's like less, you know, I don't know how to describe things with my artistic mind I'm artistic in both ways all right let's hear what I got for now all right boom I got like a little intro down but I feel like it could be more bouncy. So what I'm going to do here to fix that is I'm going to go over here to the kick. And... Wait, well, I don't remember what tracks anything is on. So let me just get to this point. Alright. Then I'm going to... Let's see, what's that? Alright, I'm going to move that. Turn that all the way down because I want that to be side chained. What's this? 
I also want that to be side chained. All right, let's start with this. These are the super sot. I'm gonna add a something called fruity limiter. It limits stuff or whatever, but I don't use it for that like ever. So I'm just just gonna go scroll that a bit so it's side chain one and then I'm gonna move the knee all the way that way the ratio all the way that way I don't know what that does but it makes it work so now I'm gonna turn that down this is the threshold this is how much whenever the kick hits how much it's gonna turn down the audio of the thing you're side chaining All right, I feel like it's the side chain goes on for too long. Uh, no, it always does when it's on the basic settings. So I'm gonna turn down the release and turn down the sustain, 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 sustain. I feel like this kick sample is kind of ass. Let's see, will this work better? Eh, it's kind of eh. All right, let's see. Let me go through my too many kick sounds. I'll go with that one. I don't want to spend too much time on the kicks. All right. Now that I've side chained the super saw, you know, actually, I'm not gonna side chain the melody. I'm gonna just. Oh yeah, with mostly every instrument beside bass, besides bass stuff, I tend to EQ out all the sub. To kind of avoid clashing and to give up space so the bass and like the kick has room to punch and feel more powerful so I'm just gonna really quickly do that so like <laughs> I think I'm done with the intro. Once I finish the intro, I tend to go on to the, I'd call it a verse usually, and start doing the drum pattern for that. Usually I go with two basic drum patterns because like, I'm bad <laughs> at music. <laughs> get a kick sound I'll show you two of the basic drum patterns this is one of them and then another's like this both of them work well this snare is kind of ass in terms of this song so let's change that oh I like that one I just cut off that trail, that nasty trail. Okay, I think it'll work better with this. Yeah, it has more of an upbeat feel to it and I feel like it works with the instrumental. Usually with these kind of drum patterns, let me just single it out. I'll add some ride symbols I add some ride symbols I just cut off the <laughs> the rest of it and I'll make it so it's in between the snare and the kick and it gives up let me just show it 
I don't really need to describe it. You'll be able to hear it. Let me just shorten the ride symbol. I feel like it removes the grooviness. Yeah, it gives it kind of like a groove. I could have used a better ride to symbolize that. Let me just find a better one. God, why is it so hard to find drum samples? Uh, that one works. I just add these to the mixer track. I'm gonna turn down this one. You will have the snare a bit lower than the, you know, kick. Next, I want to add some hi-hats, not open ones, closed ones. Kind of like this. I like these kind of hi-hats. For this one, I'm going to have it on a, have a, go like this. Yeah, it's going to be fast. It's going to go like Bitter, 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 bitter. And boom, you have drums. All right, let me just grab these drums and just keep cloning it because that's what a professional musician does. I'm probably going to change these drums up in some parts of the song as I usually do. You don't want to keep the same drum pattern going on for so long that your ears start bleeding, you know. All right, let's hear what I've got so far. got basically the start to all of my songs all right there's a few things that we've got to fix here like the fact that kind of the drums just show up out of nowhere you get me how the drums feel like they're just showing up out of nowhere you hear this there's like nothing to allude to it going to come up so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the super saws like at the last moment and the bass to like give some anticipation towards the fact that something's coming. I wonder what it is. Oh, it's drums. All right. Then next, another thing that I'm going to add is crash. A crash. Usually that is a song's way of kind of like signaling into the fact that you're on in like a new part of the song by adding like a crash. You hear this? Usually I'll either keep it like not pan, but usually I like to pan it to like your left ear. Then uh, I also like to add, let me go to my go-to reverse crash symbol in the Cymatics Trap Starter Pack in FX and then Zoom Reverse Symbol. What I like to do with this is go to Fit Tempo Usually it's like that, and then boom, add this. Also pan this a bit to the left. Turn it down a bit. And then. I'll probably also remove the drums. Then 
boom has a bit more I don't know flair I, I don't know what I'd say for that but yeah music stuff sometimes I'll also add impacts so next what I'm gonna do is just copy this over because I like to do that I like to keep room for the vocals so I just keep a part that's kind of the same for like a tiny bit usually for like around this much and then I add a change up around here it's usually a change up to something slower so let's get work on the slower part all right let's go to this base let's make a new baseline let's delete this get out of here and get out of here and boom back to square one base this time it's not going to really have much of a rhythm to keep it slow Why am I making chords in the bass? What am I thinking? What is my brain doing? Thinky thunko. Boom, we got a simple bass line here, but it's good for a slower part. to add some chords over these parts now here's something that I like to do with my music is do borrowed chords it's basically where I take a chord from another key and just put it in the song just shove it in there usually I don't like specifically choose a key that I'm boring from usually I just change the chord that usually would be like a major or minor chord and change it to like a to the opposite you know and let's hear how this one sounds I don't know how it'll sound sometimes it just doesn't sound good and I like sounds ass but hopefully here it will sound good I'm praying if it doesn't I'll just remove it Yeah, I like that. All right. Right here is where usually a diminished chord would be that contains a tritone. This is a tritone. Listen to this. Yeah, that sounds bad, doesn't it? But you see what I'm going to do here? I'm going to just go. No more tritone. I'll just experiment, see which chord works. All right, I think that chord already works, so no need to change it. All right, got the chords. Time to move them to their actual channels that they're supposed to be in, their patterns. Goodbye. Get out of here. All right, put them there. Boom. Now time to add some drums to this part. Usually I add some drums at random points when I feel like it. I'll add the, the lead thing after. All right. So for this part, I'm gonna make the drums slower. They're gonna go at half time, half time. All right, boom, did it. Now time to make the lead part because I did that out of order as uh, I do.
because that's what I do. Yahoo. Alright. This one I won't follow what I told you last time. Or maybe I will. Probably I will. I don't know. But it's not going to be as repetitive. Usually when I'm not going with repetitive kind of stuff, I kind of just go wherever my gut feels like it will sound nice. And if it doesn't, I just change it. You haven't noticed I really like this kind I don't know what it's called but it's where it goes like bland on I, I don't know J just this I really like when things go like that in melodies it sounds nice but I think I got this melody down so time to put this in their respective pattern all right let's hear this all together God, who keeps messaging me? I do not care who the fuck you are. I'm just gonna throw my phone out. Get out of here. All right, no more phone. Putting crash over here and adding the symbol so it smoothly goes. I'll just copy this so it goes again because usually this will be an F and F song and it needs someone to repeat or not repeat, usually they repeat, then I'll have kind of like a drop kind of thing where it is less calm. It goes back to kind of like this kind of stuff where it goes like, but I'm gonna make it a bit more fast, I think. Probably, whatever works. I kind of don't really think when I make music. Making this tutorial is kind of like nice. It's giving me a chance to think about how I do my stuff. Maybe now is the time I can add some rhythm to my super saws. Maybe this time it'll work. How about if I do it in kind of like a Jersey club kind of pattern. Added the drums, added the chords. Now I'm gonna add some more melody. Melody. And boom, I think I'm finished with this part. Let's listen to it. Beat vibe to it. What would I do in this situation? I think I would clone it all. Just make all of them new patterns and redo what I did at the start but with something new. 
so it doesn't get repetitive. Melody done. Melody done. Let's hear how it sounds all together. Again. <laughs> Just use Fruity Love Filter and create an automation clip with the cut. Put that down and then change the curve a bit. So it'll sound like this. <laughs> So it kind of has like a fade out effect. And basically, once you do that, you're practically finished with the instrumental. You might add a few changes, add new ideas towards it, well, in it. But that's pretty much the basic stuff. You can add more, get creative with it. The structure doesn't always have to be like this. I don't always make the structure like this, but I most of the time do. This is just the structure that I default to when I have no idea what to do. Whenever I have more idea of what the song's meant to be, I like tend to do a lot more. Like add new sections. Like if you have a whole concept behind the song, it's way easier to come up with ideas and different sections that will fit more with what you're going for but when I'm making just music for the sake of music it's hard for me to think up new ideas just out of thin air so I tend to default to something like this and it tends to work and that's practically it for instrumental stuff, for like FNF stuff mainly. I might do another video adding vocals onto this because I don't feel like adding vocals onto it right now. But maybe another time. Actually, there's one last thing in the tutorial. It's this. I always add this to my songs because it just makes them sound better. Go over here, Maximus, Presets, and then Clear Master. It makes it sound way better. All right, there. Now that's it. Now I'll play the song in three, two, and a one. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
right there, that's it. Finally, I'm done. How long did this fucking take? Let's check. Time spent one hour and 45 minutes. That's a pretty good time. All right. Now that I'm done with this, I can finally stop recording and try and find out how to edit this shit. All right. Have a good day. If I'm doing a part two, I'll see you there. Hopefully.